All right, if you've been following along so far, we've gone through the manual process of splitting apart a mesh, voxelizing, game resing, UVing together, baking separately with transform nodes, doing a bunch of manual work in order to get this automated process rolling. And it's it's still fast, and you can still pass arbitrary objects through those node networks, but let's talk about a more elegant solution. So if we go back up to this GoZ mesh, or if you imported the FBX, it's the exact same method. You're going to have all these name attributes. So let's say we want to do all this processing on these meshes, but we want to do it automatically so we can pass every single one of these through our pipeline and then have it nice and baked and exported at the very end. So let's talk about how to do that. Uh, I can reuse some of these nodes, but let's go ahead and start from scratch. I'm going to delete any nodes we had out of here, and we're just going to go back to this base one here. Uh, we still do have this null star geometry in here, so let's go ahead and blast that out. We talked about blasting one of the very first videos in this series. I'm going to do it again, so I'm going to hit tab, and then we're going to do put in a blast node. Uh, this time, let's talk about a different way to do that. Instead of going over here and using the selection name attribute here to select uh, for our blast, what I'm going to do is uh, go to the blast node, and also instead of using the drop down group and selecting it, you can click this little white arrow here, and that t takes you to selection mode, and then you can either select in your viewport, uh, you can select in this list over here, you can use shift key if you want to, and then you're going to see down here at the bottom is going to say press enter when done. So we selected the star, hit enter, and then if we make the blast node visible, we have effectively blasted that star out. So let's talk about how to automate processes on each individual piece, and for that we're going to need Hit the tab key for, let me go ahead and move this over so you can see what I'm typing out here, for each, and it's going to be for each name primitive. So in order to select that, I'm just going to hit the down arrow key, because we don't want the connected piece, we want name primitive, hit enter, and we're going to use this node. So why the for each named primitive? Well, if you middle mouse click over this blast node, you're going to see we have two primitive attributes, name and polygroup. So for each named primitive in our object here, and again, if we go over here, in this section here, so these are all named primitives. For each one of these, we want to run operations on. So it's going to be a for each loop for each piece. So I'm going to take this blast node here, plug it into the top of this for each loop, click the bottom node, and make that bottom node visible. Uh, it doesn't really do anything, but what we can kind of visualize what this loop node is doing is if we turn on the single pass here, you're going to see it isolates just that one piece. And if we take this slider and move it, you're going to see Every single piece has its own unique ID, so it can be passed through as I drag the slider. So if you want to run something on here, let's go ahead and pick something we can see well. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this eyepiece here. So let's say uh, the next step in this workflow is we want to voxelize this to take all these separate little pieces and stick them all together into one solid envelope mesh with no interior faces. So I'm going to hit tab. We're going to use the game dev voxel mesh. We're going to just drop that right in between there. So uh, if I make that one visible, you're going to see this is, we've effectively just voxelized this mesh. And if you want more information on this, go back through the videos and watch the in-depth voxelize mesh video. Uh, but for now, we're just looking at this mesh. And again, if we go to this for each and make that visible and we switch pieces, we can go look at this and that's the screen. Here's the hinge, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if we want to run it on all the pieces that are in this imported file here, we're going to need to turn single pass off. And now what it's done is voxelize every single one of those pieces. Now you're going to notice something a little strange. If we zoom in here, you're going to see this hinge geometry is very, very high resolution and the base geometry is very low. Why it's happening is if you click on the voxel mesh here so we can see the parameters, we have this bounding box relative size checked on. What that's doing is essentially taking each individual piece, scaling it to a uniform bounding, bounding box size voxelizing it and then scaling it back and putting it into place. Why you're getting inconsistent density here is because larger objects like this base is going to the uniform bounding box size, but it doesn't have to be scaled down that much to fit it, whereas something smaller like this little hinge right here is having to get scaled up very large to fit that uniform bounding box size, and it's getting an essentially a very small voxelized resolution that's being transferred to a very high polygon count. And again, we went over the manual version of voxelizing a mesh and making it into polygons in earlier videos, so go check those out if you need more information on the voxelize process. But for now, all we need to know is we need to even these things out. Now, before I turn that box off, uh, as of this recording, if I turn this off, it's going to throw me into the millions, several millions of polygons. In fact, even if I go over here to low and turn off bounding box, I'll go ahead and do it just for demonstration purposes. Uh, it's going to give me, I think, somewhere around 30 million polygons. It's not a big deal. It's only going to take a few seconds to crunch through, or maybe a minute to crunch through. 
Um, and this is where good hardware and lots of RAM come in handy. So you can see here, we're using the uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper with 128 gig of RAM. So that certainly comes in handy while we're doing really intense cooking processes. But again, it's not gonna break anything. It's just gonna take a few minutes. There we go. That took, uh, it took about a minute, minute 15. Uh, so not too long, but now we can see down here in the corner, we have 36 million primitives sitting here. So we don't really need that. So instead of low even, I'm gonna do custom and that's gonna dial in a value of point one here and you're going to see okay that's much more reasonable we only have 359,000 primitives so this I can deal with and of course like we did in the previous voxelized videos feel free to change the resolution adaptivity dilate projecting and sharpening as needed so with this voxelized mesh with bounding box relative off we can see the voxelized squares or resolution are consistent through every single object, which is great. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the defaults here. Again, if you wanna dial these in finer, go back to the previous videos and you can check that out.